the weight required weight of floodplain zoning bylaw is required in order to be eligible for the federal flood flood insurance. And they had originally expected everybody to adopt it by June 30th, but COVID and delayed town meetings and the fact that actually the PCR didn't have the ability to process them anyway. They suddenly discovered, oh, well, we can't review all these things. So, so they just extended the deadline in 2022. But in any event, it's required. They sent out a template that basically says, the, this is your bylaw adapted reader from here, which is what we have done. Um, we have taken Slava Furkov working with us. Um, she's been very good. We are the first time that she has dealt with we have a tendency to be early on zoning things, which has been productive for us, but it's a for her and, and a little bit of difficulty for us occasionally. But anyway, um, what it does is create the old flood. There actually was a floodplain zoning bylaw, but Nicholas, who had been on the planning board for what, OTF years didn't know it was there. I, I've been on for 12 years, I didn't know it was there. Mm -hmm. It was so ineffective, it didn't do anything. Basically, um, this one they're, they're really serious about trying to keep people from doing things that would make flooding and pollution and soil erosion and all of that worse. And of course, that translates into regulation. Mm -hmm. um, what it does is establish a what they call a flood and overlay district in zoning which is a district that sort of sits on the top of the zoning map and conditions only apply within that boundary. Um, it's based on the flood insurance rate map. Would you believe that wait lease haven't, hasn't been updated since 1979? Yes. So that's what it is. Now, I thought, when I first saw this, I thought we can't possibly administer something that's 40 years old, because obviously there is some change. And it's just a matter of this is what it is, this is what you do. They are in the process of updating it. My guess is the updates will undoubtedly show a much bigger area of things. Because of the things we've just been talking about with all the um, what does Burkhardt had prepared a digital map based on the paper map. The way this was set up once upon a time was that the paper map was in the assessor's office and it's the binding thing. And it really is the binding thing. Mm -hmm. um, Burkhardt had prepared a digital map and Don Sluder was a map guy. Didn't think the resolution was good enough to be as refined it. And that's the one I sent you. But it's illustrative, it's not official. Right. Really Understanding at this point that this bylaw overrides all the agricultural exemptions. Mm -hmm. That's not my purview, so I'm not really sure. But we have that, we specifically asked that question of PCR. They came back and said, yes, Peggy Sloan is 100% sure. So we have asked town council to verify that. Okay. Um, and hopefully they'll be getting back to us 
couple of weeks. Um, now, the problem here is that what happens is that all what they call development. Are we in your way? No, no, I just want to ask. Um, has somebody got the key here to lock up tonight? I do. I do. Oh, okay, you do. Sure. And any of the ladies, if you, uh, if you have to go in the ladies' room, the floor may be wet. I'm out of here in five minutes, okay? okay. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All
and I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, but as a matter of fact, most of this stuff is pretty visible. And a lot of farmland is up, but this is so so close to River Road and, and other places. So, so that's an issue. I don't know. Anyway, the floodplain administrator is going to be in charge of. I'm not sure at this point whether you call it a permitting process or a review process. Mm -hmm. So you have to develop a list of all the permits you need and all the approvals. I mean, one thing you could do for me is uh, you never occurred to me about irrigation holes, you know, develop a list of things that. Could could that could be potential sticking points? Well, or things that people need to know about, yeah. or is this included or isn't it? I mean, yeah. Can I can I bring a pump down to the river, throw suction in, and run a pipe up to my field? Well, I think it without would touching anything, without I me mean, without uh, well, to dig a hole. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know, dig a hole and you right. might do it with the ground. Yeah. But if you if you try to cycle the pump, you know. I, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not, well, this, is, this is why I'm here. We're, I really, we're I mean, fortunate in Waitley that a lot of these floodplain areas already have irrigation spots established. Yeah. You know, there there aren't any new ones. It's all old Island Corps of Yeah. But I mean, you know, the idea is to maintain. Yeah, well, I was thinking Correct. If, if the spots went to place the bridge over. Yeah. I'm sure that we wouldn't think that you have to get you know, the new process, but I think you would. Yeah. Yeah. You think it would be possible to make a list of activities that require a review process, but also put them in categories at encouraging um, quick approval of certain things? I mean, it seems to me that what I understand of the spirit of this is. For example, they would like to discourage somebody from building a pesticide storage shed in the floodplain because if it flooded, that would be a pollution problem. Yeah, and they don't want anybody moving on the dirt to create up a river bed. Right. Or, but it seems to me that improving or maintaining your irrigation pump site probably wouldn't you know, really make any difference. Well, how do you see why I'm here? And so could we so could we make a list and say these things need to be reviewed and approved. Actually, they, that should be pretty simple. And these right. things may be a problem. I think it requires working with Scott Jackson. And I think we're very fortunate. Scott wrote the Scott, book. Scott wrote the book. The Conservation Commission is actually going to be the review body. He thinks that most of this is already fairly well covered. So the, the administrator, the yeah. floodplain administrator would work hand in hand with the CONCOM. I, I missed the meeting where the CONCOM got to the Yeah, the, the Conservation Commission is the primary reviewing authority. So you, you have an appointed, you have a floodplain administrator. Floodplain administrator will be the record keeping uh, yeah. Have a checklist and check everything to be done. Right. They're, they're specific. You know, the CONCOM looks at a lot of different things besides floodplains, but they would be specific. The floodplain administrator is specific to that. And, and just as a note, that there's also federal rules uh, for working anywhere near a wetland. Hmm. So there's this, there's a, a, another level of compliance. Well, this is yeah. Um, there are eight duties of the floodplain administrator. Plain um, regulations, ensuring that the permits are applied for, oversight of the application process, coordination, notifying adjacent communities prior to alteration of a water course. Wow. Good luck with that. Um, maintaining records and keeping stigma current. There also is somewhere buried in here a requirement that we have to 
outline the enforcement process for the state. That'd be a lot of fun because it could have to be made up by the whole class. I don't know if this board looks like enforcement process. Wow. But, but what, one, I wanted you guys to know what's going on. And two, all the help you can give about ways to make it easier than what I do is kind of make a great one. Um, and anything, Peggy Sloan regretted that she couldn't be here tonight. She wanted to give her feedback. And there's no other town in Franklin County that's this far along. I think that somehow all that flap of the Conservation Commission and Hadley related to their adoption of something similar to this. And, yeah. and the campsite, how it, I don't know if you know anybody in Hadley and whether they did any kind of youth work. You might find out, you know, I think, I'm not sure it's exactly this that they did. No, it was more the campsites. Well, I know the campsites were the, and it was the, were the, the sticking point. But yeah. But whether they adopted this, whether they 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 adopted a new flood plate bylaw yeah. in, in February, but I don't think this was part of the one. I, I don't think it was this one. So no. I don't think it's this precise. It was it was along the same lines, but originally in Hadley there were these campsites in, in places along the river. And, and there was originally, you know, you would have one or two campers, and there were some that were just Really abusing that rule with the, with the number of people that were camping and what they were doing along the river. So that's that's what started the whole problem. And, and then yeah. it was a case of, of shooting the messenger. You know. that's that part. We're always really in favor in this case. Yeah. Well, we have a campground too, but as for going the streets, as long as you can move them there. And they're not. Yeah, well, the, they're not establishing, right? They're not really disturbing the ground. No. So it sounds like what you need from us is for us to know about this so that we can help inform people that there, there's going to be yeah. some extra, an extra process if they want to see something in this zone and help us know the kinds of things that might come up, right? And also, I am hoping that if there's a special town meeting later this fall, that this can be adopted for me. Because I would like to be able to sort of get the word out. If it goes to the regular town meeting, it's just going to be mushed up with a zillion other things. And yeah. Be very hard to educate people. So there's, that's why the urgency here. Right. Right. And rather than wait for the town meeting to have somebody complain, that they didn't know about it or wasn't yeah. informed and didn't get into a chance to have an opinion. So what we are thinking, well, we're, we're, we're fumbling our way, you know, we're, um, but one thought I had was in order to get something on the ballot on the warrant, you have to have a public hearing. And I thought that could also be an education session to structure their lives. I mean, we called it a public meeting instead of a hearing. And really advertise it and try and get the word across. Um, and all honesty, I don't know how much latitude we have to change the wording. If this is one of those, it's more like like all EPA stuff that they tell you what you're saying. But it, yeah. I mean, our our latitude is who does the reviewing? Is it a permitting process? Is it a review process? You know that. Um, 
great. And not only that, but you're you're forming a template that the other towns in Franklin County, Hampshire County, as well, will probably no, use. Don't put that on. That's kind of hard. To... But yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Well, we are. Actually, it's been very good for a to be started working for me. And she seems to she was the poor played person. And now it's gotten to the point where it's more into the technicality space. If we got them asking the questions of the CPR and questions about how it really works. So I was I will report back to John. If you can come up with a list of questions, is, is this covered like and, and maybe maybe those are for Scott, I suspect Scott more this is this is where Scott would have the background on that. I'm happy to talk with Scott about it. Scott and maybe Peggy. Like, does the land actually have to be disturbed? Right. You know, if you disturb it half an inch, does that matter? Is it six inches? Is it correct? I'm, I'm getting it. You, you. And I think there'll be have to be a serious distinction between. Maintaining something yep. that already exists versus establishing something that's new. And, and I think that Scott and the Conservation Commission have dealt with that stuff for years. In and, zoning, you call it grandfather. But yeah. But yeah. You know. But what's normal maintenance? If, if you've yeah, got to yeah, brush yeah. out to get to your spot for pumping. You know, maybe you haven't used that for a couple of years because we've had enough rain. So, you know, you haven't brushed it out. You got to don't go and do some maintenance. Even digging something out deeper to put a suction. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're talking about the banks of a river, or plowing, or disturbing the land. Well, it's it's within those four areas. Up in the hills, you're probably okay. And, and this usually, is just in the, that stuff is below plow the plow line. But there might be some village. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I oh, think that's, that's a normal activity. Is it's if you go below the when you go below the plow line, which essentially is a subsoil line. If you're going deeper than that, but that's that's a delineation you need to make. So, if, if they were doing another map, you know, we talked about the color of the, uh, the FEMA flood zones. But I would, yeah. It, it, John it, added that, but it, it, it's what your eye goes to. I, you know, I made maps for years, and they're sometimes they get too busy, and this one's a little bit too busy. Economic the story you're trying to tell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because you see the aquifer over the One thing I'd be worried about is, you know, you have a pump down there, you have gasoline or propane or whatever is stored in the you know, but if the flood comes, you know, you don't pull your pump out. They're talking about the contaminants, but that's when you know something gets released. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, even if it's, you don't disturb anything, it's still potential there. Right. Uh, right. True. I mean, and I that, that's somehow when, the, when they're worried about high water. Right. That, that's normal maintenance, right? right? But then there's other act of gods that you can't anticipate. Right. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff, and, and, and these things aren't a big deal until they're a big deal. So it's trying to head that off the pass. You know, I, you know, I 
thing too is that with digital mapping the accuracy of those flood zones those flood maps has gotten a lot better you know margaret and i were just talking about the different soil types that, that they did and the same thing is true there where they're, they're digitally mapped so they're more accurate so those flood zones that, that's the other thing evidently this is the yeah it, it, and, it's and franklin county is the only county in the state the easy ones are done first. Well, I could talk to Scott and Peggy and then come back to you all with a report. Yeah. And I mean, this commission, we're non regulatory, but we certainly have input in a lot of different things. Yeah. Well, they reach us too. So, absolutely. That's a tough one. This is a good one. Research replacement stage. When I think for those of you who are not meeting or don't know any changes, you know that. Zoning is a balancing act. They're always trying to protect one guy's property rights against the good of, some, of the town and everybody else. And with big solar facilities, this is a balancing act needs to be really, really tough to try to save forest land and farmland and views and still have energy and everything. It's a night. But one thing we put in the last Vision to this large solar facility bylaw with this remediation fee. Um, where if you propose a big solar development on land that has been in chapter for any one of the previous three years, the developer has to pay a fee into the open space fund for the CPA. And I, this was my idea. Nobody in the house has ever tried this. Mediation fees are problematical within the state legal system. They have to be very precisely designed to be court. Unless I had Brian, I had Brian uh, show me the case law and or the legal interpretations. Um, basically, it comes down to unless the fee really goes to something impacted by the event, the courts will find it non-binding or non, or it will be invalidated. And when we put this in the bylaw, there was a caution from the attorney general that it might not be Court, which we have known. But I think we defined it in a way where it was precise enough. I mean, go to the open space fund, it's about as direct um, replacement mm -hmm. as it could possibly be. But the other thing we did is say, well, 
it will be established by the select board with input from the CONCOM and the ICH. So the planning board and the CONCOM and the select board can all determine their delegates to the committee to develop this fee, but you guys have not. And the plan has tried for months to get a nominee. So I'm here pleading. I need a body. Joyce is a select board representative. I'm a member of the speech of the council. So I'm a planning board person. We have to sit down and work this out. Um, I've been trying to collect CPA data on cost of conservation restrictions. Yeah, we have all the weekly APR data. Um, but, but it's critically, I mean, one, the bylaw requires that there be a, a magnification number. Two, I think, for this to have legal authority really be representative and to satisfy the conditions. It needs to be, and I think you guys would want to for it. I'll serve on that. Doug's doing CPI, I'll do that. Um, the last one is and you know, this is what they're doing. I've been, I got here, let me explain the background of what I'm thinking about. I've been curating an exhibit to the Historical Society Museum about the history of weightlifting and objects. And I have actually paleo American objects with the standards of staff from 12,000 years ago from the state on their farm up to COVID maps and the maps of the pandemic. The farm stuff, there'll be an exhibit about bloom corn and room making, which is huge here. There will be shade tobacco and broadly. But looking over things, I thought two things. One, there is nothing in the historical society's collection about seasonal workers, except the teenagers who used to work. Shade tobacco back in the city. Um, the River Valley High School. Mm. Made in the shade t shirt. There, there are two pictures of Happy Valley farm um, workers, black, unnamed. There is, we have a whole population, a whole heritage here. Or, or part of our farming that's uh, actually, I think, fairly visible to most of the community, but certainly the historical society has kind of about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and it would be great to, I mean, we try and collect not just old things. I mean, we have to collect things now so that they're there for 50 years from now. And that's, that's the next part of my field. But, but you know, if anybody, I don't know if you could put the word out, if anybody gets photos or stories, or you be willing to take in, you know, people who've been coming back for years, or. I don't know if you guys know about this, but their camp on um, Long Plain, they used to have West Virginia girls there. Yeah, I was in the That was the one where the, the, the machine shop was. You know. I don't 
so you know it's that sort of stuff so again if i that's sort of a broad quest for for let's get these people somehow recognized or 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 just it's um the other thing i thought would be absolutely fascinating where the exhibit has been postponed until April. There's a whole winter and we'd like to sort of build up to it. I thought it would be wonderful personally to have a few farmers talk about change in farming either over their lifetime or over their farm or something, just to give us that. I mean, I know a couple of farms just I could still remember Neil Benderson to one of my grandparents. Fairview Farms was a dairy. They've gone through two iterations since then. Right. Um, other farms, have, have, you know, this industry is so good at adapting. When people look at it now, they're going basal, you know, that was true 30 years ago. And to me, it would be fascinating to have. A few farmers come and talk about either changes in their lifetime or, you know, John Lassell. His grandfather won all sorts of awards for beauty gladiolas. And he had to shift for just a competition. All the, everybody's changed. And people would love that. But so I was hoping I could interest the guys in the, talking to some people and seeing if they would be willing to do talks. Are you thinking about recording interviews or public public presentations that you will come to see? That's part of I'm argument. flexible. Uh, I had been thinking that it would be a talk mm -hmm. with with that cat there recording, right? Yep. And maybe some pictures, slide pictures in the background, which I think would be easiest. But some people don't like to get up in front of crowds. But I think that would have the biggest impact. That would be the easiest to talk about. But, um, but I think you might have an easier time. I mean, we could, we could, if we have an email list for the farms in town, mm -hmm. almost uh, just ask for a written history of your participation in agriculture. And would you like to talk about it? Yeah. I think I would say it's a process in general. Right. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, they, they have a long history with migrant farm workers that uh, return year after year after year. You know, and, and like you said, that farm is, has adapted. Well, not or or stationary or or a 
proceed with an order list proceeds or I, you know I if you had to pick something that you wanted somebody to know that years from now what what would put on your file your what all I can think of is with the box with their name on it. I well, we some don't. of the plastic wrap for the plants. Yes, packaging, I guess. Packaging. Um, how, do, how does it, well, I know what your customer sells. Uh, it's just a once a week email, but it's not a form. But yeah, I mean, I'm just. For these guys, it's the progressive way that they do business. Yeah. And the volume of business that they do with people that they have. Crazy. I'm just anything. Watermelon Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> hey Judy, what's a number that you can get reached at or be reached at? Oh? Yeah. Five four six. Thank you. But it, you guys aren't waiting, you know. I mean, you're what makes this place go. And 50 years from now, I think people should know what you were doing. Because you've been doing it good. And the article from the recorder of that day is far. I don't know anything else about your part. It's a good article. But if that hadn't been there, I mean, I know your part was not there. Did Jacob? Yeah. I that math that you one of Okay. I can look and see, you know, we're doing those once a week now in the Gazette and when they get the government report. Oh, if it shows up in the Gazette, I'm just you seeing it. Okay. Um, but it's silly, you know, it doesn't have to be a t shirt, huh? right? Um, have you spoken with the Grange? No. I wouldn't have brought that up with you guys if I didn't have to be here for the other two things. But. Yeah, no, the Grange is, is a wealth yeah. of information and stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. Where did those go? Yeah. I'm not sure how they, they kind of. I don't think they've done anything since the pandemic. Oh, yeah. No, that's, yeah. Um, do you think, I mean, you could ask. About H two A paperwork. I mean, that would be an example of an object that I don't even know what H two A is. You think yes, you see the program that some part time. I mean, seasonal workers come under the H two A program, okay. and again, it involves paperwork. And so that would be an object that would represent yeah that group of people, which is only one of the groups of seasonal workers who are. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, we have a. We have one naturalization paper for immigrants in Great Lakes, mm -hmm. but and that was you know Polish person, like Grace. Right. Yeah, that kind of thing is something that tells you a big story. Yeah. Photocopies of four hundred fake IDs. Yes. Oh, was that out loud? <laughs> no, it was recorded. Well, no, every time I'm down at North's trap, it'd be a soccer ball or another punch card. I don't remember here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's the intermingling of all these different ethnicities and cultures, and they're all working together. Yeah. But if you live on the North Street, they're invisible. Okay. Yeah. And that's what it shouldn't be. So that's what I'm going to do for your Certainly.
questions or comments? It does seem like we could send something out. If they did it not until April, you think it should wait till fall, because I don't think anybody well, else. I don't know how much of that it should be to them necessarily. Right. Um, some, some of it is just for the ongoing collection. Some of it is for the ongoing collection. Right. Some of it would be nice to be more of a nature if you right. put together and talk. Or, yep. Um, if, if you came up with a great object for the exhibit, Right on a contemporary agriculture, that might be nice too. Do you look at the um, chain farm uh, ruling? Uh, that is another document that has to do with uh, immigrant workers in Whaley. Um, and their EPA stuff. Right. Borders, potato bags. Um, the society has a stamp that we can use on his back. So, one of the Galanka farm uh, green bags for, 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 a, for a honey label or, or a label for honey. We got that covered. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming to me. Thank you for meeting us. A favor to me. Well, oops. we haven't done this for a year and a half. It's kind of nice to be back out. Well, I have to say yeah. it's good to see you yes, I don't like Zoom. Never have, never will. But be that as it may. I don't have a lot to say about the farmland, the farmland is local importance. You might remember if your memory is good that there's an effort to designate farmland of local importance, which will, thank you, um, thank you. the state will consider when making things like APR decisions. I think it's more important for towns that don't have lots of prime farmland and farmland of statewide importance, which Swayze has a lot of both. But there certainly are examples of, like if Poplar Hill Farm or Newsday wanted to put some of your land in APR, if it had been designated as farmland of local importance, you would be more likely to be approved for APR than if it had, assuming you don't have land that's prime or of statewide importance. So Al Averill, who used to be the state soil scientist, and is now retired but back to work for NRCM doing this project has been bugging me, he asked me months ago to look through a list of places of parcels that he thought had once had either now or once upon time had farming activity on that and it could be designated of local. And John and I finally were sitting down and went through the list. And so I could write out that and say, yes, these parcels. Now. Hey, I know that piece of land. That's, da, 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 da. Because <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> can't see from the right. You can see a map and uh, figure out stuff about a farmland from them. And, all, and it's not that he went by it on his own. Used to anyway. So, I, <laughs> right. So, anyway, that's the status of my uh, Okay. Well, I was. We're missing my duties. I don't have the minutes from the last meeting. I figure that will wait until our re first regular meeting in October. So yeah, we're at the point in the meeting where we could talk about weather conditions and farm activities. Uh, the weather has been dreadful. 
dreadful. Um, I don't know that there's any crop that's doing well. There's still some first cut hay that hasn't been harvested out there. There's some of the divine tobacco was harrowed under today and with more to follow, I'm sure. Um, it's been a really rough season for, for produce. I don't care what you grow, but I'll hear from you guys, Doug. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know our, our losses have been tremendous. Uh, I think we had about 19 inches of rain in July at our warehouse. Okay, yeah. And, uh, I mean, we plant every week, you know, so things were going okay. We're irrigating like crazy. Yeah. You know, in June. And things are, are, believe it or not, are getting dry again. Oh, well, we were irrigating last week. <clears throat> yeah. When it was 95 degrees every day. I mean, it's one of those things, you know, if you're planting a crop every week, like lettuce or chard or things like that, you have opportunities along the way. Yeah. But if it's a season long crop, we like squash. Yeah. Yeah. Tomatoes, potatoes. Dave, how about you? We started off with our store right here. We got a farmer crop. We got a huge spot of this rain for a little bar. Was dry, but, uh, the strawberries were good, the blueberry crop was good, but everything else is no deal. Yeah. No deal. Yeah. Great. 